In these problems, we are factoring some quadratic expressions. And the tricky bit here is that we have leading coefficients, so numbers multiplied by the squared term that are greater than 1. So here we've got 2y squared minus 7y plus 3. So what do we do in this case? You're probably used to factoring quadratic where you get you know, a y plus or minus something times a y plus or minus something. In this case, you're going to have some numbers on the y as well. The numbers you multiply by the y are going to be the factors of this leading coefficient. And then the numbers here are going to be factors of this uh, constant term. And of course, it all has to add up. Well, it has to foil out to get the middle term. So it's not going to be as simple as just adding them up. You're going to have to multiply the inside and the outside terms and add them together to get that middle term. Let me show you how this works. I think the first step we should do is just list the factors of our leading coefficient and the factors of our constant. We're going to use both those sets of numbers here, so we, we need to know what they are. In this case, it's pretty easy. The only factors of 2 are 1 and 2. We won't worry about the negative factors. And in fact, let's just take a look at the signs here. We have a negative in the middle and a positive constant term. Uh, the only way to get that is with multiplying a negative by a negative here. So our factors are going to be negative 1 and negative 3. So we're lucky we don't have a lot of choices of factors um, to work with here. So what we're going to have here is to get this 2y squared, one of these y's is going to be multiplied by 1, and one of them is going to be multiplied by 2. I'm just going to write a 2 here, make this a 2y, and leave the, this one just as y because 1 times y is, is still y. And then we're going to have the negative uh, here to get the positive here and the negative in the middle. Now we've got 1 and 3 to stick in. Where do we put the 1 and where do we put the 3? Well, you might be able to see this really quickly, or you could just experiment. So let's try it. Let's put the 1 in here and the 3 in here. I know that my leading terms are going to multiply out to 2y squared. That's fine. And, and I know that the second terms are going to multiply out to a positive 3. Negative 1 times negative 3 is a positive 3. So that works. How do I figure out if I'm getting the right middle term? Well, that's the O and the I in FOIL. So we're going to multiply our outside terms, that's y times negative 3, and our inside terms and add them together. Well, y times negative 3 is negative 3y, and negative 1 times 2y is negative 2y. When you add those together, you get negative 5y. That is not what we want. So I must have these in the wrong order. Let's, let's try uh, reversing them. Take the 3 and put it over here put in the 1 here. Now, when I multiply the outside terms, I get y times negative 1. That's negative y. And the inside terms, negative 3 times 2y is negative 6y. Aha, I get negative 7y. So this will foil out. That should be a 1 there. will foil out to make this. So you may have to do a little bit of trial and error and make sure you're multiplying those outside and inside terms and adding them together to um, see if you get the, the middle number there. That's a little complicated. Let's practice this with uh, doing another one. And this one is slightly more difficult. We've got a 7 out here, which is not too bad. We've got a 6 here, which has some, some more choices for factors. We've got the same arrangement of signs, though. We've got a negative middle number, and we've got a positive constant here. That means we have to multiply uh, um, two negatives to get that positive 6. Let's start by listing all the factors. Uh, so on the squared term, the factors of 7 are pretty easy. It's just 1 and 7. On the uh, constant term, well, we've got 1 and 6. Of course, these are going to be negatives. Or we've got 2 and 3. So we've got a couple of choices to work through here. So let's set this up and see how we can get that negative 23z to be in the middle. So. I know I'm going to have 1 and 7 for my factors on z. So I'm just going to put in a z here and a 7z here. And I know the signs are going to both be negative. And let's see. Just before I start putting these in, I know 6 times 7 is 42. That's pretty big. Might not want to deal with that. Um, and hmm, let's just try with these the negative 2 and the negative 3. I usually start with the, um, the factors that are more in the middle. So let's uh, let's start putting these in here. Let's maybe put in the uh, the three here and the two here and see what we get. Now I'll go ahead and multiply the outside and the inside terms here from FOIL. So z times negative two is negative two z, 
And negative three times seven is negative 21 Z. Oh, look at that. That is negative 23 Z. So we got lucky that time. I happened to choose the right pair of factors and put them in the first time in the right place. If you'd put the two here and three here first, you wouldn't have gotten negative 23z, so you'd know that wouldn't be it. So maybe you'd switch them around and, and calculate it out again. But that is how to approach these. A little bit of trial and error will get you there. And that's how to factor a quadratic that has a leading coefficient greater than one.